right. Hi, guys. So this week we're talking about how forms, shapes, and even colors can change our environment or change the way that we see that environment. So before we get started on the demo, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about some of the different environments that we interact with on a daily basis. So if you think back to last year when you were back in your classroom, how that environment felt right? There are some certain things in your environment that let you know that it's a classroom, right? It's different than your home environment. There's different shapes. There's different furniture. There's different flooring. There's even different lighting in our classrooms than we have at home. Now think about your home environment. You might have a bedroom or a place to sleep that looks a little bit different from the environment for the rest of your house. That's because the things that we place inside our environment, including our lights, including colors that we choose to surround ourselves with in our environment, change the way that we feel about that space and how we interact with the space, right? So if you have a bed in your bedroom, you probably use that for sleeping. You might use it for sitting and watching videos or playing games or something like that, but you're not going to treat the furniture at school Maybe you would, but we're not supposed to. You're not going to treat the furniture at school as you would your bed. You're not going to climb up on one of Mrs. Turner's tables and just take a snooze in the middle of my class because the shapes and forms in our environment affect how we interact with those shapes and forms and how we interact with the whole environment. Now, a couple of different artists use some different um, shapes, colors, the way that they fill their canvas or their paper to tell us something about the environment that they're trying to create. So I wanted you guys to think about some of these artists this week as you're deciding what forms, what environment you want to depict in your artwork this week. So let's look at a couple of these. The first one you can see right here, this is the work of Henry Rousseau. Henry Rousseau, oops, I zoomed in too far. Henry Rousseau did a lot of outdoor spaces in his artwork, specifically jungles, so really wild environments, right? He's trying to capture that kind of wild feeling in his artwork. So you can see in this artwork down here, which you can see larger in your own slideshow this week, um, but I hope, and I hope you take a look at some of these artworks a little bit more closely to see what I'm talking about. But Henry Rousseau used a lot of organic shapes. So you can see in that jungle painting, he didn't use a lot of squares, a lot of rectangles, even circles. All of his forms are kind of organic or freeform shapes. He used a lot of leaves, some animals, tree branches. Everything is sort of flowing in his painting. In addition to the organic shapes, he also used really muted colors. You can see he's not using super, super bright greens. He's not using like a bright, vibrant orange for his tiger. Everything is sort of muted and calmed down as you would find in nature. If you walk outside in your backyard, you're not gonna see these like very vibrant, bright colors. You might see some brighter greens, but think about it in a jungle with trees overhead, how that affects the environment. You're not gonna have the kind of lighting that you have in like a bright, sunny park where the grass is really green, the trees are really green. You're gonna have have this kind of shadowy environment and he tried to capture that in his artwork. So if you're trying to capture an outdoor space, you might think about how the lighting is going to affect the colors you use. Are you using really bright, vibrant greens or are you using kind of muted, soft colors as if it's in shadow? Okay, so be thinking about that. Fernand Leger is the next artist over in the middle of this slide right here. And his work centers around, he's really trying to capture the essence of living in like a very large crowded city. So you can see in his work, first of all, his whole canvas is full of these very geometric shapes, right? It looks like he's trying to mimic like signs, street poles, some stairs in there. Everything has these hard, straight edges. And he's also using very, um, primary and secondary colors. So he's using a lot of red, blue, yellow, which are our primary colors. He's also using some like purples, greens, and oranges, which are our secondary colors, and then lots of black and white. But he's not mixing in like pastel colors, like light pink. He's not using the same colors that Henry was using, those like muted greens. He's using really bright, vibrant shades 
of these red, blue, yellow, purple, green, orange colors. And that all gives you the feeling that maybe you're in this like very crowded city. There's these colors all around you that kind of remind us of signs that you would see on the street maybe. And all of these geometric shapes you would also see if you're, you know, in a really crowded city and you look around, there's a lot of buildings, there's a lot of signs, everything's very geometric shaped, okay? And that affects the way that we view the environment of his paintings. Our last artist that we're going to talk about is Marc Chagall. Marc Chagall is a really cool artist. His work primarily focuses on dreams. So he wants to capture the feeling of a dream in his artwork. And if you look at this painting versus the other ones, it's clearly very different. He's using super vibrant colors. His outlining is kind of sketchy. Nothing's really like hard, like the edges in Fernand's paintings. All the edges are hard in that one. All the edges in Marc Chagall Gaul's paintings are very soft. They're kind of sketchy, like he drew them with, with his paintbrush with maybe not a lot of paint on it. You can't really see hard outlines of anything. And he's using really bright, vibrant colors that you might not see in nature. For example, the sky in this painting is this like very green, turquoisey blue. You wouldn't normally get that color of sky if you just like looked outside, right? But he's trying to capture this dreamlike feeling. So his sun is this really bright orangey red. He has these people kind of floating in a bubble in the sky. He uses a real mix of organic and non-organic shapes in his work. And it gives you the feeling that this might not be a representation of real life. Maybe he's trying to capture like the feeling or the environment that you would get from a dream that's not like real life. So that's the end of our discussion about artwork, but I hope that you keep some of these artists in mind and the different ways that they capture the environment that they're trying to create. So when you're choosing to draw your environment this week, think back to these artists and think, what environment am I trying to create? What feeling am I trying to create about that environment? And how am I gonna use shape, form, and even color to really capture that? Let's get started on our demo.